Okay. Um, good evening, Steve, and uh, welcome on this show of Inspiring Conversation. Thank you for taking some time out and talking to us today evening. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thanks, Rupali, and it's, uh, it's a real pleasure to be here. I understand you coach creative people. I mean, that is something that I'm really intrigued about to know. How does that process work? And uh, uh, what is the cycle? What is your format? And why specifically creative people? Um, well, I'll answer the last part of that question first. Why, why creative people? Um, basically, because that's my background. I, you know, Personally, I'm an artist and I'm a writer. Um, so and, and these are just the people that I'm very, very comfortable with being around. You know, I spent my whole life around artists, writers, musicians, filmmakers. So, you know, that's sort of my natural community, if you like. Um, so I love working with these people. And um, in terms of the process, well, you know, creative, creative people, they're, they're, they're people. So they have the same issues that we all have. So it's really not about so much that grouping of people as mm. opposed to any other group because they have the mm. same the same stuff that they're trying to resolve but often the outcomes or the reason they need to resolve it can be a little bit different so a creative person might get stuck on um you know what what to write in the next chapter of their novel or right yeah what, this, what they're gonna what they're gonna create out of this piece of stone if they're a sculptor or, or um, just how that part of the plot un unfolds in a movie script. So, you know, there's lots of different uh, blockages that creative people uh, can come up against. And mm -hmm. so the, for me, the process is um, firstly identifying what that block is um, and then diving deep into where that block first manifested because usually you find that behind that block that creative block there's probably some emotional blockage there it could be it could be stress it could be anxiety uh, it could be um imposter syndrome you know we all suffer from imposter syndrome yeah that's a very common one nowadays absolutely you know it, it is and um and that can that can cause a major blockage for a creative person when they, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I've, 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 been, I've suffered from it plenty of times in the past. And, uh, you know, I trained as a sculptor. And of course, when I'm making a piece of sculpture, I'm comparing it with you know, some of the greatest sculptors in, in the history of, you know, in the history of art. Mm. And then, of course, I think, well, you know, I'm not that good. Uh, right. So, okay, I'm going to pretend I'm that good. But no, I can't convince myself, you know. So we get into this whole cycle of um, comparing ourselves to people that we shouldn't be comparing ourselves to in the mm. first place, and then trying to live up to that to that story that we've told ourselves about that other person, and mm. always falling short, and in our own estimation. Um, so it's about uncovering those stories, but it's also about looking at the psychological and emotional blocks that get us into that tangled mess in the first place and mm. then pulling them apart. So I'll take people through, uh, usually I'll, I'll take them through a meditation practice. So we'll start bringing them into the present moment. Once you can get someone into the present moment, then we're trying to get them to be still. Mm. Stillness is so tough for most people but getting them to that place of utter, utter stillness so they can see with clarity the whirlwind of chaos, which is normal life that yeah. they are normally a part of, but they are now the still point in the centre of that hurricane. And instead mm. of being whipped around by it, they're watching it with clarity and awareness. Right. And when they do that, answers, insights, just emerge out of nowhere you don't even have to go looking for the solutions they just come up you know they emerge out of nothing because you get into that space of emptiness when mm. there is just stillness and awareness answers just flower wow i mean even i mean just the thought of it is so empowering but I'm I'm a bit curious when when we talk about creativity, isn't it some kind of self-expression? And 
from being a self expression to to like you know to going towards something that we get into the comparison and then being the best or doing something that someone else has done how do we get into this comparison cycle uh, from a from a point of expression to a point of comparison and why are we driven there how how do we get there to that position well i mean we're always i, mean, it's, I guess I guess to achieve in any sphere of life, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be a creative thing. It can be anything. We set ourselves goals, hmm. we have plans for the future. And we'll, how do we measure that goal or that plan? Is hmm. it a good plan? Well, it's only good when we compare it to somebody else's plan or someone else's achievement. Is it that good? No, it's not. Yes, it is. You know, so we get into that whole comparison uh, thing immediately mm. where we're comparing what we do and what we want to achieve to what other people do and what they achieve um, mm. and in a sense that's you know it does make sense that we do that but is that helpful not always it's not always a helpful thing because yeah. you know, we're not that other person we don't have that we don't have the skills or the resources that that person have we have our skills our resources which might be better or worse than that other person's and, and again that's not a comparison we should be making we are just who we are with what we've got and yeah. we just do the best that we can but it is useful sometimes to look at what others have done as a as a you know if we want to achieve that level of greatness to know what that looks like because someone else has planted their flag there mm. is actually quite useful in some ways but then to try and beat them or match them that isn't useful we can see the the place where we want to be and then we just aim for our own goal and if we get right. there that's great but if we don't that's also great because it's actually about the journey the journey is the most important thing yeah i hear you saying of uh, like you know journey it's a journey we all have a like you know process or a path to walk on and it's a journey uh, to our goals and also uh, what I hear is uh, rather than setting our goals against someone else's goal, how about we set our goals against ourselves? Like, you know, how were we doing yesterday and how when, how better can we be today and how well we can achieve tomorrow? So I think that shift of perspective might be mm. helpful, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It is. I mean, it's always a process of, mm. of um, beating uh, not beating but improving on where we were yesterday mm. you know becoming a better person a better businessman a better creative a better a better husband better wife whatever you know yeah. we should be moving forward all of the time in comparison to ourselves but it is yeah. useful sometimes to see if other people have been there it's it's okay to recognize that yeah they've got there and mm. I like that. That's where I want to go. Yeah. I want to be at that place too. Take the inspiration, that's, maybe. Yeah, it's inspirational. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. but it's not about competing against those people. If we want a competition, it's about competing against with ourselves. Yeah. You know, this yeah. is how I was yesterday. Let's see if I can improve on that today. You know. Yeah, yeah. I hear that. And uh, when I, as I said, creativity is more about self-expression, I believe. And uh, people who are already doing creative stuff would know what their creativity is all about. Mm. But uh, in general, there are people like me who wouldn't know what, what my creativity is or what, how can I express or what is that outlet for me? How do we identify that? Well, that's, that's always a really interesting this is a, a fascinating conversation for me because, you know, on one level, I can say that existence itself is an act of creation. Because oh, that's profound. Every aspect of life is a process of changing what was previously. Mm. And, to, and, to, and to, you know, your existence is the destruction of your non-existence. Your non-existence was destroyed in the mm. process of you existing. So something was lost for, for another gain to be made. And that was a creative act. A mm. creation happened there. So the entirety of the universe is in the process of creation moment by moment, and it never ceases. So we are all creative beings. It mm. is, it's in our DNA, DNA. We cannot help it. We're constantly in the process of creation, replacing wow. what was a second ago. 
But in terms of, you know, the, the things that we would traditionally consider to be creative, like painting, drawing, music, mm. architecture, filmmaking, poetry, you know, all of these traditionally creative subjects. You know, if you if you go back to um, the, your, your first two or three years, four or five years of life, mm. how did you express yourselves? How did we all express ourselves? Yeah, I remember, I mean, having seen my kids now, it was mostly by actions or crying. I mean, when initially then when they're so tiny that they can't talk or move, everything is through crying. It is. That's yeah. a, that's that they're expressing their emotions through that activity. But there's also yeah. one other thing that we do. We all do this, it's natural, it's built deep in our DNA. We draw. We all draw. Right. We pick up crayons and we scribble on a piece of paper. We make marks, okay? Yeah. And then we learn to draw little stick figures or whatever. We are all artists at birth. You know, we are born. That is our first language. Most people, yeah, it is. Most people will say to me, look, I can't draw. I'm not an artist. It's nonsense. That was your first language. Before you could say a single word, you were drawing things. Wow. There were scribbles on paper, but that was your first language. Art is our primary language. I haven't thought of that in that way. I mean, this is profound. I'm I'm enjoying what you're bringing up on this conversation. Like, yeah, art, I mean, it's, art is our first language. That's impressive. Absolutely, it is. You know, written written language replaces the drawing thing, which is the D. What is in our DNA is that mm -hmm. deep need to make marks, draw. Mm -hmm. You look at the cave paintings. You know, these you go back. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of years, you see these primitive works of art in solid yeah. caves. You don't see little written messages next to those drawings. Mm. Language in that form didn't exist. Language was pictures. This is our primary method of communication. So on that level, we could say we are all creatives in the in, in any case. It's it's within our DNA. But mm. in in terms of the sort of creative processes that you know we consider to be. Uh, uh, you know, artistic expressions like music, poetry, etc. Um, mm. We need to broaden that category. You know, there are people that are, you know, um, doing coding. There's people doing graphic design. There's people. There's architects. There's people that are, that are um, building amazing businesses. This is also a creative act. It's not mm. just about painting a picture, composing a piece of music, writing yeah. a poem. You know, they're all fantastic things. But if you can build a business. How is that not a creative act? Of course it is. It's a process yeah. of creativity. Now, this makes sense because uh, mostly when we hear creative in common language, it only uh, like, you know, defines the, the art or the creative work that we see professionally. But being a person who can create a community is a creative process. Someone who can, building a, uh, mm. who can build a business is a creative process. So that is, that is really profound. I'm sure I have learned something new today. So, so when this creativity is obstructed for a very long time, when people are like you know unable to express that creativity, what do you think happens? What kind of outburst does one uh, feel, or uh, what what is what is it that we are missing? What when that creativity is obstructed, we are not uh, like you know freely expressing ourselves. Um, I think. When we get blocked uh, and we can't move forward, and I've been in this place. I mean, I remember when, when I was writing my last book, I got stuck on a particular chapter and it was, and I was getting very anxious and stressed because I just couldn't figure out what on earth I, I should write. And I, fi I, fi I felt the same way as an artist. I'm a, I'm a sculptor. I remember being stuck with exactly that same problem. What? what should I make? I have no clue. And I could feel the stress and the anxiety building. Mm. Didn't matter which discipline I was working in, the stress and the anxiety was the same. Um, and what that took, certainly as, as a sculptor, I remember what that took to resolve that particular issue was somebody coming to me and getting me to think outside of the box that I'd created for myself. I was trying to solve the problem inside the problem mm. and there was no way to do that. it was just completely impossible i needed someone to pull me outside and say look there's the problem 
get out of that and look around the edges, you know, look for something else. And as soon as somebody coached me to do that, it was, wow, yeah, actually that's, yeah, now I see it, I can do that. It took someone else to see what mm. I could do. In yeah. terms of the writing problem that I had, um, that, that was a different, uh, although the feeling emotionally for me was the same, it was the same stress and anxiety, the resolution to that problem was very different. That was just the case of me having to tell myself, stop wasting time, sit mm. down and write, just write. And it doesn't matter if it's junk, you can take that out and throw it away later, but just get on with the job and stop making excuses around this block. The block isn't there. The block is a mental construct that you just need to stop believing in. Mm. And as soon as you're believing in it, it wasn't there in the first place, it's gone. Yeah. Oh, and that's then... yeah. That's that's something very important because um, most of us in our day to day life as well, we like you know we keep so many things pending, procrastinate uh, so many things because we think oh we don't have the perfect situation, the perfect idea, or the moment is incorrect, hmm. and we keep holding those things to ourselves and do not take action. So I like what you're saying of uh, to clear that obstacle or to like you know clear that obstruction we just have to go ahead and take an action to it absolutely yeah. and let I mean, the creativity flow you do i mean a classic a very you know a really classic way that writers deal with this so-called mythological writer's block which frankly doesn't exist but there's procrastinators invented that um but the way to deal with that issue is just to write yeah, uh, you know, imagine you're a writer, you get up, you have no idea what to write, you're stuck, you don't know what to write. Pick up your pen and you start writing. Yes, it's junk. Everything you're writing is nonsense and no one's ever going to read this stuff. But you start to clear that blockage by writing. It starts, yeah. it breaks it down. And within three, four, five paragraphs, maybe a page, now you're in flow. Now you're writing the good stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm going to definitely you know. pick this point up in my writing uh, next. So go. when the creativity is flowing, uh, what do you, how would you uh, like, you know, get this creativity channelized or bring this creativity in a leader's life who's trying to build a, like, you know, a new business maybe, or who is into a leadership position, who is, who is responsible for a team or someone who's waiting to take that leap into the leadership position, but is not sure if that person is the right person. So how can we bring this creativity? How can we channelize this creativity into that role or position? Mm. Yeah, I think if you're in that, I mean, if you're in that leadership role, you really need to be able to make creative decisions. You've got to develop that ability to think outside the box um, mm. because all the great ideas are outside the box. They're not in the box. We're all in the box. They're not great ideas. We've all got access to that stuff. You want the great ideas. You've got to develop the ability to think outside the box. And um, it's a really critical skill to develop. And that can, that can be done. I mean, there's all sorts of ways of doing that. There's lots of mm. different tools and techniques you can use. Um, but again, you know, the, for me, I guess two primary tools that I use. One, meditation. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's just bringing someone to that place of stillness and still point. Because when you can do that, you can open up your awareness. Now, the, uh, the Japanese, the, the Zen Buddhists call it uh, choiceless awareness, where you just mm -hmm. sit in this expansive, or your mind just sits in this expansive state, not focus on anything in particular. It's open to everything. And when, when it's in that space of complete openness, ideas and all sorts of stuff can just arrive. Yeah, Some of it rubbish and you're not interested, but some of it can be amazing, incredible ideas that you simply could not have thought about with your normal processing analytical mind. You would never have got to that place. Mm. But in that place of open awareness, this stuff can, ar can arise. That process of writing, stream of consciousness, will often throw up ideas as well. In, that, in the middle of all that rubbish that you're writing, there'll be a mm. little golden nugget that you'll just mm. later on, you'll, wow, that's amazing. 
that's incredible. I'm going to take that and see what I can do with that idea. So in these processes, you have the ability to come up with groundbreaking ideas that no one else would have thought of that you can then use in that uh, in your strategy in your in, in whatever whatever role you're in in that business. Um, but it's also, I think, with creativity in that leadership role, it's really also very important to recognise that what you have your your creative potential is not the same as your team's creative potential, and to mm-hmm. actually allow them to express their creativity as well, allow mm-hmm. them to tap into their intuition, because once you get into that space thinking of you know, wow, I've got all of these amazing ideas and we're just going to run with everything that I come up with. Well, what about the amazing ideas that your team just came up with as well? Mm. You know, give that, give them some space to express what they're coming up with as well. And it is, creativity should be a team, a team effort. It's a collaboration. It's not just about Mm. you and your ideas. Because when you pull all those ideas, you're going to come up with some amazing things. Yeah. Yeah, and and that is really empowering uh, even to you as a leader and your team members because they get a they get a they get an outlet to express themselves and then they are best when they do that. And as yeah. you rightly said, you get some brilliant ideas coming out of such like you no know, process of working. And there was one thing that I found, uh, or rather audience would found contradicting, saying that, oh, being a leader, I have to juggle with so many things in my mind. How can I even think of uh, sitting in a quiet place and not thinking anything and still getting my job done? So that is something I really liked about what you mentioned about meditation. Mm. And uh, and I work with so many female, uh, like, you know, high potential female uh, women, uh, like, you know, across the across the globe and being women by default we have so many roles to play and uh, there are few roles which which are uh, like you know taken as female centric or women centric like taking care of household bringing up kids mm. traditionally uh, these roles are looked upon uh, like you know women are looked upon for these kind like catering to these roles so how can a female professional uh, who's coming from so such an overwhelming place use this creativity use this outlet to to lead in a position where she is where she has to cater to multiple uh, like you know roles and identities that she is playing and still be uh, looked upon still be uh, looked upon as someone who's who's as a leader as a man as any man mm. can be yeah I mean, oh, there's a there's a lot of stuff in that rupali um yeah i mean first of all i would say that you know, I, I can't remember who this was who said it. I, th- I think it was a Zen monk called Shunryu Suzuki. Uh, and he once said that, you know, every, everybody should meditate for an hour unless you're really busy. And then you should meditate for two hours. Okay? And <laughs> ab- absolutely, that is true. Everyone, can, everyone should and needs to find time to do this practice because it, it will profoundly change your life i don't care how busy you are this should be number one on your to-do list every Mm. day and it because what that will do is it will it will bring your your work day your life into much more balance you'll be able to prioritize your the daily tasks much more easily Mm. you're not going to waste time on tasks that actually weren't that critical you know Mm. you'll you'll find that you've got more time you'll spend half an hour, an hour, whatever it is, meditating, you will actually find you've got more time as mm. a consequence of spending that time on meditation. Everything right. will become clarified and much more balanced. Um, and that is going to, and also what will come out of that practice is a much more clarity over your own true nature, who you really are. You know, you're talking mm. about the different masks that women have to wear well, let's get all of those masks and put them in a box and shove them under a cupboard somewhere because we don't need the masks. What we yeah. need is our own true, authentic self. Mm. And once we're in that space, we can stop being all of these other people a lot yeah. more. Now, that's not an easy thing to do. That's a journey for sure. But the more we can be our authentic self, the more we don't have to try and be 
this person and that person and you know mm-hmm. we don't have to be those things um but i think and i think that addresses also the point that you were making about women you know achieving or being seen to achieve not being seen to achieve but actually achieving in this very uh male dominated sort of patriarchal world that we live in um and i think when anybody and this is not just women when anybody can can express their authentic self more Mm -hmm. and more they just naturally get into that flow of Mm. that flow is success flow only leads to success it doesn't lead to failure so once you get into that flow of life and you're Mm. expressing your own true nature a lot more being your authentic self which means uh, expressing your strengths and recognizing your own weaknesses and being able mm. to work authentically on those weaknesses, then everything starts to flow in the direction of success anyway. And we also then start, or we, we get to the point where we're no longer making a comparison between am I successful as a woman in comparison to these, this man or this group? Yeah. Of I am successful within my own right, and that mm. is enough. Yeah. 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 I, I really love what you said in the end, like, you know, there is no need for any woman who is who's authentically showing up to mm. compare herself with any, any other women and for a man, man itself, because as you said, once you are in that flow, everything seems to just like, you know, go with the flow and there is nothing stopping you. You just become unstoppable. And I think that's where the leadership comes into play. And you are then able to bring that creativity, bring that inclusion mm-hmm. within your team. And what you get is a success at the end. So you do, yeah. yeah. I mean, and you know, you just gotta look at some of the big the big multinational corporations these days, like you know, Google, Deutsche Bank, Nike, Facebook, they're mm-hmm. all getting into mindfulness meditation. Why? Why are they giving their employees time off work to sit on a mat and meditate? Because it's good business sense, because it's yeah. skyrocketing their productivity. Their employees are more focused. They're taking less time off work. The companies are making more money. Mm. It's a mm. win-win. The employees are getting much better. Their well-being is improving and the companies are making more money. It's, it's just there's no downside to this. And this is bringing people into that space of being authentically themselves. Mm. So, so nowadays we don't have to worry about what more skill sets or what more course my employee should go to. I think the question here now is how best my employees are when they are working and what best can they bring into work when they are like you know, spending eight to 10 hours or whatever X, Y, Z hours they are in the office. Mm. And uh, I think that's also a kind of creative decision that leaders do take. And nowadays we see that uh, trend changing towards our um, employees. And what I take from this conversation today is uh, one is meditate, being, being more aware about yourself, about your creative process, about your like you know transformation process about your outlet and this just be authentic self Mm. and bring that creativity into whatever you do and success will be yours is that correct absolutely because i mean it's when you're being your authentic self your authentic self is naturally in the flow of creativity on a constant Mm. basis when you try to be creative you're now trying to do something that you don't understand. Mm. When you just be your authentic self, you are naturally a creative person. Creativity will flow from you mm. just because you're yourself. That's amazing. So so not doing, but being is the Absolutely. mantra of the day today, is it? Just be. Be the still point at the center of the hurricane. Oh, that's that's that. I had a very good conversation. I'm sure you enjoyed your time talking I did. to me. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Thank you for this for so many golden nuggets that you shared with us. Yeah, today. my pleasure. My pleasure. And I'm pleasure. surely looking forward to having another conversation with you sometime in the future. Looking forward to it also. Have a great weekend. You too. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Bye bye.
oh, I did say great weekend. Why did I say great weekend? <laughs> I don't, well, I just assumed that you were going to post it before the weekend. So. <laughs> I'll have to edit that. 